Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Another wild one for you today. Rob on Dreadstill versus Nick on Yorion and Taxes. Dreadstill, a Team Hammerfist creation. Rob, one of the founding members, and he is dusting this off with some new tech. Might go to the gardens. How it goes. Forge Mystic. I think that's the name of it. Correct me if I'm wrong. We'll see if it comes up. Force of Will stopping this Stoneforge Mystic. Right into a standstill. And, you know, standstill is one of those cards that doesn't see a ton of legacy play. It's very powerful. It's certainly legacy playable. It's draw three cards for two mana so often. And one of the interesting things about it is it, it's kind of like land tax and so many cards that fundamentally challenge the normal way that you play out the game. So Standstill gives you the option, as does you know a card like Mystic Remora or Ristic Study in Commander. You can plow forward and hand card advantage to your opponent, or you can sit back. And depending on what you have for options, we see here Solitude being grabbed. Uh, depending on what you might be able to do underneath a Standstill, it may not be correct to crack it right away. And for the most part, you can be fairly certain that your opponents are going to do it wrong. I will say, overall, there's going to be a decent amount of people that are just charging headlong into a standstill, cracking it when they shouldn't, and then also people that are playing conservatively against it and letting everybody make a bunch of land drops and uh, just getting punished in that way. So it's, it's one of those things where you give your opponent the choice. A lot of the time, they make the wrong choice. They don't have perfect information here and uh, can just go spectacularly wrong. Of course, the cleanest way often to stop a card like standstill is a brainstorm during the end step when they already have seven cards in hand at that point it's just filtering but to get to that point could take several turns and it may be i mean more than several it could take many many turns if they're making their land drops and we see here nick beating down i think just hard casting a solitude Of the guard, really a major, major card in Death and Taxes. I mean, it was a deck before the printing of this card, but man, did it make an impact with that ETB exactly what the deck wanted. And of course, in Yorion and Taxes, it allows you to find what you're looking for, even though you're playing just an 80 card pile. Now, Dress Down is really helping out these Phyrexian Dreadnoughts, they're looking good. So a pair of Dreadnoughts, they are not legendary, but Caracas still casts Swords to Plowshares, so that, that can work. What this deck is all about, still has another 12-12 to handle though, and Mycosynth Gardens, I believe, is the tapped Dreadnought over there. Okay. Solitude takes out another one. It's a lot of life. It's going to take a while to get, to get that life back. It's not quite towards the plowsharings a merit lage from Dark Depths, but, you know, when, when it's two of them, it's more. 24 here. He's up to 51. He had to hit three of them. Wow. This game is bananas. But he has a little bit of a clock on his side of the board. See what Rob can do. I mean, it's not like he's trying to do 45 damage one at a time. He has a Solitude and I believe an Eternal Dragon. Timeless Dragon? Timeless Dragon. So this is like eight a turn. Swords to Plowshares. All right, well, that greatly decreases the clock. Four damage a turn. And turns to stabilize here for Rob. Solitude was just... Pretty brutal printing. I'm not going to lie. I don't love how it is able to answer Emrakul. Like, Emrakul was supposed to kind of be like this card that doesn't get answered very easily. And Solitude just makes a mockery of that. Exactly how they wanted to be answering your stuff anyways. Ooh, Shark Typhoon. Here we go. 
Taking a 4-4. Four, four. Mana off screen. I don't know if there's mana off screen. I put a little box up there. Yeah, there we go. There's one at the top. Four four, very large on this battlefield. Flicker Wisp has been found off of this Yorion flickering recruiter of the guard. And that's a nice clean answer. So Yorion is a four five, so. Currently, Nick ahead on board, and not that far behind in life. He's actually at 31. Both players just comically large life totals. Both of them actually trying to win. Hmm. Maybe there's a Caracas here? Yep, looks like a Caracas. What do we have here? Three more cards. Will this Flicker Wisp kill the Shark token? Stifle the ETB. No. No, it will not. It will just be a 3-1, which does not stack up favorably in combat with a 4-4 last time I checked. What a crazy back-and-forth game this has been. Rob had just, like, infinite damage, and Nick able to stop it. Thar Commando, another card that would stop Dreadnought. Not the most efficient, but gets the job done and doesn't let them gain the life, which is a nice touch. Very obstinately strong mana base from Rob. These Wastelands on Nick's side, really no helpful targets right now. Yorion, this is... Eats a hard cast force of will that would have provided a ton of value as Flicker Wisp would have flickered the Yorion and just created this back and forth relentless avalanche of card advantage. Instead, is this a hard cast Shark Typhoon? Got a fetch. He's got to have a stifle for it, right? Yes, Stifle. That would have been just a devastating play to make on camera. Just jam your six drop into their onboard answer. So it is still a pretty big investment, though. I mean, he could have made quite the token through a card. Instead, going to be down a card here and spitting out smaller tokens. Now, let me know how you would have played that. Do you just cycle, or do you actually cast the enchantment? And does being on camera make the difference? Do you do it for the lulls? Try and make the video more interesting. Matic ending, making another body, thanks to the onboard Shark Typhoon. Alia coming down. He has some synergy with your own Caracas as you can bounce her in response to removal or in combat after first strike damage has been dealt. But the other side of the board quickly outclassing, given that they all have wings. Sending in there nine, just a couple of turns left. I don't actually know what Yorion and Taxes is going to be able to draw here at all have any type of chance. This may just be a wrap. Orion's already handled. Yes, Solitude is fine. But I'm skeptical that Rob's hand is total garbage here. I don't think you commit the Shark Typhoon. You don't already have some other stuff going on. You'd need support to play underneath the Shark Typhoon. Aether Vial.
one more draw step fill it bail nick out continue the game or are we on to the next one that's it all right rob in a wild game one probably about 10 minutes on the timer right now it looks like we're going to double speed so may have a hard time getting all three games and if it goes that way On the play here, tempo advantage certainly helpful for a slower deck like Yorion and Taxes. You can get really far behind on the draw sometimes. And he has a Spirit of the Labyrinth, which, you know, last game, one of those being out would have been helpful. It was about a million standstills cracked. Rob drew a crazy amount of extra cards. Spirit of the Labyrinth is not going to allow for that. A Wasteland actually has a target for a change. In Caracas, three coming in, and going to have a second Spirit of the Labyrinth along with Faith or Vile. Towards the Plowshares, takes out the Spirit, so very disciplined play there. Actually opting to take the three rather than commit to getting rid of the Spirit of the Labyrinth. So it is a little complicated there, I suppose. I don't know if I swords there. If you're going to hold it in case there's a better target, they just play another spirit. Pretty, pretty meh. Though six damage a turn is a very real consideration. And now at this point, scroll of fate, that is a good answer to the spirit of the labyrinth. Make a endless stream of two twos. You're drawing a card each turn. Worst case, be able to manifest it as a two two. Of course, if it's a dreadnought, you can be flipping it up for a casual twelve twelve. Roll of fate, a commander product card that just kind of came out at a time didn't really have enough, I suppose, uh, support around it to uh, become popularized. I feel like that was that was the end of 20 that was 2019 i'm not sure how much time we had before we'll shut down but two twos piling up maybe modern horizons 2 came out shortly after that the gem one of those gems from commander products that really makes a huge impact so it's the plowshares again. The answer must be used on the dreadnought, but man, it's a whole bunch of life when you're trying to beat down two casting cost creatures. And Cathar Commando dies for nothing. Stifle. Of course, Stifle is so good with Dreadnought, but the ability to hit all of these incidental triggers, you're gonna have a hard time finding a deck with more of those. Orion and Taxes. There are so many that are just devastating. When they commit the mana and don't get the payoff, it feels real bad in there. A three mana play. Thankfully, Vile took care of two of it, but still not an answer. Now, Solitude. A couple of pitch spells. Solitude. Gets brushed aside, and now... Oh, I was looking at my notes, and I didn't see what got it. That Dreadnought's off the board. Skipping in two at a time. Timeless Dragon. Plane Cycling. I can hop out of the graveyard. Also, Eternalize is not casting a spell, so if a standstill is out, it's actually a totally reasonable body. You get that, you get Shark Typhoon. That's kind of where the standstill decks are nowadays. In the past, they used to run Manlands, things like Mistress Factory, even Fairy Conclave. Now you've just got cards from hand that you can commit that uh, replace themselves, which is nice. Timeless Dragon and the Shark Typhoon. Both uh, 
placing themselves, this getting a planes, Shark Typhoon getting who knows what. And in incredibly grindy games, you potentially get both halves of the card. A little bit of a reader there for Rob, Lion Sash. And the Moran of the Third Path. And this is just kind of a tempo situation. These bodies are going to be able to keep skipping in there. Prismatic Ending gets rid of the Aether Vial. That's the more concerning card right now. The Lion Sash can get pretty big, but I don't think it can possibly race a 40 to 10 deficit. Just three turns in the air with this Timeless Dragon. That's the card that matters right now. Ooh, and Loran letting both players draw a card. You really want to have a Spirit of the Labyrinth out when you're activating this card. Of course, it doesn't always come together that way. Here, as he digs for answers, potentially giving Rob even more gas. Rainstorm. Got to be a sinking feeling when you see that. When you gave your opponent extra cards and they have the Brainstorm, even if those cards were garbage, they're potentially just converting them into exactly what they need. Two more turns, the fetch land. Making for the best combo in the game. Going to be able to shuffle away those dead cards. Actually using a Swords to Plowshares here while the Mother Runes is sick. Mother Runes would allow... Or a temporary reprieve. And here's a recruiter of the guard. Other runes can kind of hold down the fort with a blocker in the air. We have a dress down in response to recruiter. So very, I mean, better than stifle there. The only problem is to actually cast main phase. So it goes away into turn. Totally fine. I was going to say if it stuck around, it would have been a tempo problem. but. Hardcast Force on the Flicker Wisp, and that's it. What a grindy game as Dread still just, I mean, look at that. Ends with 39 life. Thank you for watching. For more magic from ELD's Time Vault games, be sure to subscribe and check out more videos just for you over here.